Now we have our final report on the state of hate in the United States and around the world. Let's go uh, to our chief international correspondent, Clarissa Ward. Clarissa, an exclusive CNN poll revealed one third of Europeans know little or nothing about the Holocaust. And tonight we're getting reaction from the German foreign minister. That's right. Well, this really was some of the most troubling results that we found in our poll. Uh, a lot of people reaching out and responding across the world. But on Twitter, Germany's foreign minister calling the results of CNN's poll, quote, shocking and saying, we must remember the greatest crime against humanity if we want to prevent fascism in the future. Well, we traveled to the Nazi death camp Auschwitz to see for ourselves just why memory is so important. It was hell. It was hell. And yet, I'm here. I'm here, hopefully, to tell young people that I count on them. Edie Eager was just 16 years old when she arrived at Auschwitz from her native Hungary with her family in May 1944. Nazi physician Joseph Mengele was standing at the end of the train platform. Known as the Angel of Death, he performed cruel and often deadly medical experiments on his prisoners. He pointed my mom to go to the left and I followed her. He came after me, grabbed me. I never forget those eyes. He said, your mother is just going to take a shower. You'll see her soon. Edie never saw her again. Both her parents were killed in the gas chambers of Auschwitz, along with more than one million Jews. Hundreds of thousands of others were worked or starved to death. Edie did see Dr. Mengele again. He came to the barracks and he wanted to be entertained, so they volunteered me and I ended up dancing and closing my eyes and pretending that the music was Tchaikovsky and I was dancing the Romeo and Juliet in the Budapest Opera House. It was that powerful spirit and imagination that helped Edie to survive the unsurvivable. It would be eight months before Soviet troops would liberate the death camp, discovering horrors that remain etched on humanity's conscience 73 years later. In many ways, it's the experiences and testimonies of those who survived that have kept the horrors of the Holocaust alive. And the fear now is that as fewer and fewer of them remain, the memory will start to fade. According to a CNN poll, it already is. More than a third of Europeans have either never heard of or know just a little about the Holocaust. The statistics for the younger generation are even more alarming. 20% of young French adults have never even heard of the Holocaust. Michael Schudrich is the chief rabbi of Poland. When you hear that younger people say they know very little or next to nothing about the Holocaust in Europe, which is where the Holocaust was perpetrated. How does that make you feel as a Jew? Uh, how does it make me feel? It makes me feel I have more work to do. It makes me feel that, I need to, that we need to be more proactive. It makes me feel that we need to work far more intensively with ministries of education. The stakes are high as Europe grapples with a resurgence of anti-Semitism, but there are signs of hope. More than 40% of the respondents believe anti-Semitism is a growing problem in Europe. Half agree that commemorating the Holocaust helps to combat anti-Semitism. And nearly two-thirds say it can help ensure such atrocities never happen again. Today, the ghosts of Auschwitz still linger, serving as a vital reminder to the more than two million tourists who visit every year. Visiting Auschwitz fundamentally transcends the intellectual. It confronts you face to face. You're not looking at a book, you're not looking at a film. You're looking at a place that was built to kill 
human beings. You're looking at a place that's a factory of death. Four huge gas chambers with crematoria built for the only purpose to eliminate Jews from Europe. When you stand there, don't try to understand it. Just have your eyes open, your heart open. Absorb the moment. Somehow, if you go there and you stand there and you experience it, maybe that will help every human being that visits to be one step, 20 steps away from ever doing something like that again. And Wolf, unfortunately, Americans do not fare much better when it comes to Holocaust awareness. A survey taken earlier this year found that one in 10 Americans were not sure if they'd ever heard of the Holocaust. That number among millennials was one in five, and 50% of millennials could not name a single concentration camp. Wolf. Awful, awful indeed. All right, Clarissa, thank you so much for doing these excellent, excellent reports. We're grateful to you, to Sarah Seidner as well. Aaron Burnett out front starts right now. Okay, YouTube viewers, listen. The Holocaust killed the Jews, which are God's people. Genesis 12, 3 in the Bible is God himself talking to Abraham the patriarch and founder of the Jewish nationality, ethnic, ethnicity. The Lord himself said to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the families and nations of the earth will be blessed through you, as two translations say. One says nations, one says families. YouTube viewers, if you hurt the Jews, you make God himself mad at you. That's basically what Genesis 12, 3 says. You can read more about the Jews in the Bible beginning in Genesis forward and find out what happened to those who cursed the Jewish people. Thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe.